As president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Elder Ted Wilson has a great responsibility. A good leader is one that leads by example. Today, we want to appeal to Elder Wilson and encourage him to lead by example in the most important area of our faith, the God that we worship. This is actually at Elder Wilson's request. He wants us to hold him and other leaders accountable. Here's what he says. Seventh-day Adventist church members, hold your leaders, pastors, local churches, educators, institutions, and administrative organizations accountable to the highest standards of belief based on a literal understanding of Scripture. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Hi everyone, my name is Nader Mansour and welcome to Prove All Things, where we explore current issues and questions in light of the Bible. Today, we want to present a very important and serious appeal to Elder Ted Wilson. As you saw, it's something that he has requested. The reason for this appeal is that Elder Wilson has given us some important and powerful challenges in his sermons. As a Seventh-day Adventist, I am encouraged when a leader is not afraid to speak the truth plainly. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Elder Wilson is here addressing the leaders of the church. Today, we as assembled leaders of God's church must not turn away from our heaven-born mandate. Our responsibility as God's humble leaders is to set an example of diligent Bible study and ceaseless prayer. Those who neglect study will be left to receive heresy as truth because God's truth has not been rooted in the mind. That is so true. Most people look to their leaders and follow their example in teaching. And so leaders have a great responsibility. Not only are leaders to set an example of Bible study, but they are to guard the flock against dangerous heresies. Loose theology is dangerously common these days. We are given the serious and timely warning again by Elder Wilson. Don't succumb to fanatical or loose theology that rests God's word from the pillars of biblical truth and the landmarks beliefs of Seventh-day Adventist Church. There are so many attacks against the landmark beliefs of Adventism. It is a commendable thing to speak out against these dangers. But while the Seventh-day Adventist Church has a number of landmark beliefs, there is one which holds more significance than all the others. It is the landmark belief of the identity of the God we worship. This is the core of the three angels' messages. This should be well understood by every Advent believer. And it is no wonder that Elder Wilson highlights this fact. A false understanding of worship brings us to the core of the three angels' messages, since those messages are to turn people back to the true worship of God. This is not just a passing comment. The true worship of God is the very core and essence of the three angels' messages. It was for this very purpose that God raised our movement, to proclaim this vital truth of the true worship to the true God. Notice again. Back to the description of John the Baptist and his work. It sounds so much like the description of Seventh-day Adventists and their work. Like John, we have been called to prepare people for the Lord's coming. We have been given a special work of proclaiming the three angels' messages of Revelation 14, lifting up Christ, His righteousness, and the true worship of God. The true worship of God is the most important feature of our faith. Keep in mind that true worship is not just about which day we worship on, that's the Sabbath. What is even more important than the day of worship is which God we worship. Which God is being spoken of in the first angel's message? This foundational truth, the identity of the true God, lays the groundwork for all other landmark beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist faith. It's all about worship. 
there is only one place where we can rightly learn the identity of this true God. It is what God Himself has revealed in the Word. This is where our beliefs are to be rooted and grounded. Elder Wilson admonishes us to do just that. As Seventh-day Adventists, we accept the Bible as the foundation for all our beliefs. As Seventh-day Adventists, we fully accept the Bible as God's inspired Word. You see, it is everlasting. You can believe in this Word. You can believe it as it reads. Amen! Not allegorically, metaphorically, or spiritually, but we are to take the Word of God as it reads. Elder Wilson is faithfully pointing us back to the Word and reminding us to believe it just as it reads. The Word of God reveals the God of the Word. Let's briefly look at a couple of verses that tell us the identity of the God of the Bible, the true God, and the one referred to in the three angels' messages. One day a scribe asked Jesus about the first of all the commandments. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The scribe understood who the one God that Jesus was referring to was. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but He. Mark chapter 12. Jesus commended the scribe on his answer and told him that he was not far from the kingdom of God. The God of Israel and the Bible is but one God, and there is none other but He. Paul, a Hebrew of the Hebrews and apostle to the Gentiles, tells us who this one God is. But to us there is but one God the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. This is the God of the Bible, the one God and Father, the living and true God and the Creator of all things. Christ is not this one God, Christ is our one Lord, and the Bible indicates that He is the only begotten Son of the living and true God, as John 3.16 famously declares. He is fully divine in every aspect, but even He taught us to worship and pray to the only true God. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. This is exactly what the Three Angels' Messages is about. It directs men everywhere to the true worship of God, just as Elder Wilson pointed out earlier. We now know the identity of this one true God. It is the Father. Elder Wilson also reminds us that we have rich counsel and truth in the spirit of prophecy. We cannot ignore what God has revealed through that avenue. We must be vigilant to test all things according to the supreme authority of God's Word and the counsel with which we have been blessed in the writings of Ellen G. White. The spirit of prophecy provides clear, inspired counsel to aid our application of Bible truth. It is a reliable theological expositor of the scriptures. Ellen White certainly had much to say about the true God. She does not fail to identify who the God of the Bible is, the God of creation and revelation. We rejoiced that the God of creation is the God of the Bible and that we can claim this infinite being as our Father. We talked of the glories of His power and wisdom and adored the matchless love which has made it possible through Jesus Christ for fallen man to become a son and heir of the maker and sovereign of the universe. This is the God of the Bible. This is the God referred to in the three angels' messages. It is the one God, the Father, and none other but He. And commenting on John 3.16, Ellen White makes it clear that Christ is indeed the only begotten Son of that one true God of the Bible. A complete offering has been made. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, not a son by creation, as were the angels, nor a son by adoption, as is the forgiven sinner, but a son begotten in the express image of the Father's person and in all the brightness of His majesty and glory, one equal with God in authority, dignity and divine perfection. In Him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And so both the Bible and the spirit of prophecy are very clear as to the identity of the God of the Bible and the God referred to in the three angels' messages. And Elder Wilson has done a good job in urging us to stand on this foundation in order to understand the issue of true worship in these last days. As he has stated, our work is to turn people back to the true worship of God. 
In light of this, I was surprised to hear Elder Wilson promoting a different God to the one described in the first angel's message. Here is how he explained it. Let me also indicate that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit all participated in the literal creation of this world. They are the Godhead, three in one, and have existed since eternity and will exist throughout eternity. They are omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and everlasting. Three distinct eternal persons, one God, our almighty God. Three persons, one God? This is the almighty God? This is also known as the Trinity, a three-in-one God. But the Bible indicated that God the Father is the God of creation and the ruler of the universe. One person and there is none other but He. We also note that there is no such thing as God the Son or God the Spirit in the Bible. The question to Elder Wilson then is this, where do they come from? And why are they included in our Almighty God, a three-in-one God? This explanation and the God identified here goes directly contrary to what the Bible revealed about the true God. And so we are faced with a dilemma, what are we to do? How can we respond when leaders teach things contrary to God's word and the spirit of prophecy, especially when it comes to the God that we worship? Thankfully, Elder Wilson has given us permission to hold him and other leaders accountable when situations such as this occur. Seventh-day Adventist church members, hold your leaders, pastors, local churches, educators, institutions and administrative organizations accountable to the highest standards of belief based on a literal understanding of Scripture. Elder Wilson, as leader and president of the church, I want to take your counsel and admonition to heart. I earnestly appeal to you to lead by example in the application of this counsel. We request the highest standard of belief based on a literal understanding of the scripture when it comes to the God we worship. We cannot accept any notion about God that is not supported by His inspired word. We appeal to you to be an example for all the other leaders, pastors, and educators in the church. You see, once we open the door to non-biblical concepts about God, it will affect our understanding of other things. I was again alarmed when I recently heard Elder Wilson describe the arrival of the saints in heaven and how they will be welcomed. We will soon cross the figurative Jordan into that promised land and be welcomed by the Father, by Christ, by the Holy Spirit, by Moses, by Elijah, by Enoch and the angels. Welcomed by the Holy Spirit? Where do we read about that idea in the Bible or in the spirit of prophecy? It is the belief in a three-in-one God that forces us to arrive at such strange conclusions. The Bible paints a very clear picture when it comes to divine personages who will await us and spend eternity with us. Here's what the Bible actually says. In Revelation 22, verses 3 to 7, we read, There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. Those are God's promises for you, for me, and for this remnant church, His Advent movement. We will spend eternity with God and the Lamb. That's the Father and the Son. The Trinitarian three-person God can by no means supplant what the Bible says. And so today we have a very serious identity crisis. It's not a crisis about our identity or who we are. The graver crisis is that we don't know who we worship. The identity of the God that we worship has changed. We have adopted a strange notion that God is three in one, popularly known as the Trinity. This is not the God of the Bible. It is not the God referred to in the three angels' messages. And this is not the God that was worshipped by the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. There is a serious contradiction here that needs to be resolved. A historical review of our past demonstrates that we have changed gods. Even our historians admit that our founders would have a serious problem with the God that is worshipped and promoted today. Here's what historian George Knight says about that. 
Most of the founders of Seventh-day Adventism would not be able to join the church today if they had to subscribe to the denomination's fundamental beliefs. More specifically, most would not be able to agree to belief number two, which deals with the doctrine of the Trinity. I hope you're beginning to see that we have a problem, a very serious problem. Yet Elder Wilson does not fail to remind us that such a contradiction cannot be maintained. What God established as the truth when it comes to His identity can never be changed. You see, the God who led and founded the Advent movement at the start is the same God to be worshipped to the end. Notice. The historic biblical beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church will not be moved. The, bibli the biblical foundation will stand secure to the end of time. I can only say a hearty amen to that. Our historical biblical belief about God is true. We should not settle for a modern alteration to the historic biblical truth. The God that our spiritual forefathers worshipped must be the same God that we worship. Think about it this way. Can we really be preaching the three angels' messages if we worship a different God to the one worshipped by our pioneers? Something is seriously wrong in this scenario. It seems we have forgotten something along the way. Elder Wilson puts it this way. Let us never forget how God has led this Advent movement in the past. And so, Elder Wilson, as you requested from us, we hold you accountable to remind us of how God led this movement in the past, how He guided our pioneers to the true biblical understanding of who He is and who His Son is. As you plainly told us, God guided them in their study. As the early believers who formed into the Seventh-day Adventist Church studied the Bible, prayed earnestly for truth, and were led by the Holy Spirit, they discovered the biblical beliefs and pillars of our faith that we hold dear today. These dedicated pioneers in simple faith took the Bible as it reads, even when it led them away from some of the most widely accepted errors popular in the churches of that day. One of the widely accepted errors that they avoided was that God is three in one or a trinity. They rejected the error that three persons make one God. The Holy Spirit led these men to reject these false notions about God and they stood on the Bible as it reads. Elder Wilson, we need you to implement what you are reminding us of. We need you to lead us away from the same errors that our pioneers avoided. We want to be found in harmony with them when it comes to the God that we worship. Of all the teachings and doctrines that we hold, the most important one, by far, is the God that we worship. That's what we were raised to proclaim and restore, worship to the true God. And so we are encouraged to do something by Elder Wilson. I implore our Seventh-day Adventist young people today to stand up for Bible truth and reclaim the great spiritual legacy. Tell your pastors, youth leaders, teachers that you want solid, biblical, and spirit of prophecy, teaching, and preaching. Elder Wilson and everyone you represent, we want solid, biblical, and spirit of prophecy teaching about the God that we worship. We desperately need that today. After all, that is the core of the three angels' messages. I appeal to you as you requested and challenged us to, that you will be a leader to deliver to us solid biblical preaching. We don't want any teaching that is not supported by God's Word and the Spirit of Prophecy. We don't want our God today to be a different God to the one who founded this movement. I believe you meant what you said, that you want us to hold you accountable. As you stated earlier, good leaders are those who lead by example. Elder Wilson, will you set an example for us in upholding the true God to worship? A biblical example that we can follow? This is my appeal to you today, and I pray the Lord will guide you in your position as president and leader of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and the millions of believers around the world. If you agree with this appeal to Elder Wilson and want to add your voice to ours, you can like this video and share it with others. If you want to know more information about this subject and the details of why we're making this appeal, here are some videos that you can watch. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time on Prove All Things and God bless.